As an investor, you want to know if you should be listening to economists, and if so, which ones should you be listening to? Well, to answer this question on who you should listen to, you first need to identify what type of economist you identify yourself with. Now, on one hand, you hear economists state that everyone running the show are complete idiots, whereas on the other hand, you hear other credible economists praise what the current leadership is doing. Now, your initial assumption is that this is probably just political, but it actually comes down to two competing economic philosophies, which are known as Austrian and Keynesian. There is a third theory referred to as classical, but this doesn't really come up too often in the modern world, so I'll leave this out of this video. Now, economics is a social science, and this puts it in a very different category to normal science. So let's just say that there's a hypothetical current scientific debate that I'll use. Now, I won't say what this current scientific debate is, as I don't want to step out of my lane, and I don't want to get too political either. But let's just say for this hypothetical scientific subject, over 97% of the scientists agreed on a consensus of a hypothetical topic. If you see a raging debate about the, on TV about the topic, it is easy to identify what side speaks for science and what side is speaking for an extremist interest group. But economics science debates are much harder to differentiate. If, however, you saw a raging debate between two economists, they could both be properly representing the profession of economists. And the reason that this is a hard science is that you can't take economics to a lab and do an experiment with it over 100 times and then have it peer reviewed where they do the experiment 100 times. You can't tell country A to try one system and tell country B to try another system for the sole reason that you're curious to see who will come out richer. And even when there are clear observations from history, there are also interfering factors such as access to resources, country's history, and whether or not there's a threat of invasion and the list goes on. So this also makes it especially harder to disprove fringe ideas that uh, no politician would be willing to try. So most of the leadership in the Western world uh, follow the Keynesian economic philosophy, and this leaves Austrian economists mostly in the sidelines of key decision making. To really simplify the differences between these two school of thoughts, Austrians want as little government and reserve bank interference as possible, whereas Keynesians see it as the government and reserve bank's responsibility to steer the economy in the right direction. Again, an oversimplified example, but in an Austrian ideal world, there'd be no central bank at all, and during recessions, no business would ever be bailed out, as doing so would be seen as propping up an underperforming business, whilst blocking entry for more efficient and smaller competitors, which in turn would make the whole industry less competitive. Interference also leads to false pricing of the business, which also amplifies market bubbles before they collapse. Now, for an Austrian, interference should only be conducted by the government if, as one group say, doing illegal standover tactics and for justice and to prevent fraud and, you know, things like that. However, in a Keynesian ideal world, the Reserve Bank would lower interest rates during recessions and increase interest rates during growth in an attempt to reduce the boom and bust cycle. Now, although the system is designed to keep markets running smoothly, a mistake could also amplify the boom and bust cycle. And that is what Austrian economists fear the most from Keynesians. And another key point of difference is the preferred currency. Keynesians are very comfortable with the use of fiat money, which is basically a Latin way of saying that it's government endorsed money. And it's basically a way of saying that the country has to only use what the currency that is approved by the government. And so that allows for the government to have complete control of the currency. However, Austrians prefer to have the currency backed by gold and or silver. So that means, in theory, that you should always be able to exchange, say, hypothetically 2,000 units of your currency for an ounce of gold or silver, no matter what the market is doing. Now, Austrians are generally in favour of larger cryptocurrencies, which is new to this social science. I should also mention that Austrians and Keynesians do agree on many of the basics of economics, such as the supply and demand and comparative and absolute advantages. So, hopefully that explains why two credible economists can be arguing with them, and yet both of them are properly representing the profession of economics, without it being political. So, you may have noticed that the debates between economists has gotten a little bit more severe in recent history. And this, this is mainly because of a few factors, such as the loosening of governmental financial regulations pre-2008, and also the extremely unique situation that COVID-19 has placed basically every central banker in the world. Now, most of the people running the central banks around the world are Keynesians, and they're using every tool that they have to keep the system from collapsing. They work on mathematical formulas where they have to compensate for variables which are not yet confirmed. Think of it as trying to fly an aircraft through a storm. Now, this is to the horror of Austrians who just want the central banks to do nothing and let everything be the way that it naturally is. Also, as for how these economists invest, Keynesians prefer shares, real estate, and other growth assets, whereas Austrians prefer precious metals and in some cases crypto. So who is right and who is wrong? Well, I do have my opinion, but it's up to you to make your own opinion. 
So hopefully I gave a pretty neutral video here and uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to cycle and look and all that other stuff people say at the end of YouTube videos and now you can go outside and play with your friends. Bye.